Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. Kurt Prenzler was elected Madison County Tre Treasurer on November 2nd, 2010. He was the first Republican to be elected to that office since John Shimkus in 1994. Mr. Prenzler had not held any previous elected office prior to his election as Treasurer. He pledged during his campaign to reduce the size and budget of the Treasurer's office within 30 days of taking office. Mr. Prenzler was re-elected in November 2014, easily defeating his Democrat opponent. In October 2015, he announced he is running to be the next chairman of the Madison County Board, a post currently held by Alan Dunstan. Mr. Prenzler started, uh, stated during a newspaper interview that his main objective, if elected, would be to have a more deliberative county board. Earlier this year, he led a petition drive to get an initiative on the ballot which would lower property taxes on the Madison County portion of the property tax bill. It's our pleasure to have with us today the treasurer of Madison County, Illinois, Kurt Prenzler. Wake, welcome to conversation. Thank you, Lee. So let's just review a little bit. Uh, you've been here several times before, but uh, let's just remind people you were elected in 2010 and you have been the treasurer ever since then. What's what has happened? What was the treasurer's office like before you came in, and what's it like now? Well, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, the former county treasurer, uh, Fred Bathon, had a very big budget, and I, re I promised to reduce that by 30 percent. And it's interesting you mentioned uh, Congressman John Shimkus, who's a Republican from Collinsville, who was Madison County treasurer. He was elected. He was an underdog and was elected in uh, 1990 and served until he went to Congress in 1996. And actually, we've reduced the cost of the treasurer's office from a very bloated figure to uh, more than 30% uh, really to where it was when Congressman Shimkus, in fact, a little bit under where it was when Congressman Shimkus left the treasurer's office in 1996. Mm -hmm. So Lee, I would say that from the very beginning, uh, the two issues that I've really uh, focused on have been ethics and lower taxes, lower spending, uh, and they're related. So, uh, Well, explain what you mean by ethics so that people understand what, what ethics you're referring to. Well, what I did in uh, 2006, actually I ran, and I ran unsuccessfully. I pointed out to the, to when I ran that uh, the tax sale situation, which is a very complicated process. In the let, me, let me see if I can just crystallize. I think I understand to be able to say it quickly, which is, when somebody doesn't pay their taxes, the county will then have to do something about it in order to get the taxes paid. And the treasurer's office is the, are the people who do it. That's right. And then you auction off to certain people those taxes, they pay the taxes, and then collect a certain amount of interest. Right? That's right, and I'll yeah. explain for your audience that um, what, what does a county treasurer do? The county treasurer does two things, number one, uh, the county treasurer invests the money uh, which belongs to the county, which is about today uh, in the, between 140 and 150 million dollars. Uh, but probably what occupies most of our time and what we're best known for is we mail out the tax bill. So mm -hmm. uh, if you own property in Madison County every year, you're going to get a letter from me and the county treasurer. And so what the county treasurer does is the county treasurer does not determine the taxes, but the treasurer collects the taxes. Okay, so uh, the uh, situation is: is what do you do when? And this year we're going to send out ta uh, bills which total four hundred and five million dollars. That's a lot of money. That's how much we're going to be collecting. That's the assessed this year. value of Madison County. No, the assessed value of Madison County is for the the fair market value of the real estate in Madison County is just under fifteen billion dollars. Uh -huh. And the amount of money that we're collecting in taxes is about four hundred and five. Uh, so a little bit more than $400 million this year. Now, when we get to January, we have four due dates in Madison County. We're one of two counties that has that. Uh, and this year, just for the benefit of your audience, again, that's uh, July, uh, uh, July, September, October, and December. 
So when we get to January, we've got about $10 million of taxes, which is still owed. And then we send out certified letters, and then that prompts people to pay, and then we have about $5 million. So what do we do with that? Because the public schools and the more than 200 taxing districts that we have in Madison County are waiting for that money. Well, we have an auction, and we invite tax buyers, and tax buyers are really people who are willing to pay other people's taxes. Now, mm -hmm. why would they do that? Why would someone do that? Uh, because in exchange for a penalty interest rate. And so we have an auction. Per Illinois state law, that rate begins at 18%. And the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to be a real auction where people bid down. So let's say- So Lee they're gonna get 18% if they can get away with it, right? That's right. Right. And that's, that's where right. the bidding begins. And in, in most counties, um, it begins at 18% and it, there's an honest to goodness auction. Well, in 2005, 2006, 2007, and 2008, it wasn't an honest to goodness auction in Madison County. It was rigged and it was criminal. And the former county treasurer, Fred Bathon, admitted to that in federal court along with three tax buyers. And uh, the former treasurer went to prison along with three other tax buyers. Now, that meant that Madison County taxpayers, the taxpayers who couldn't pay on time, they were caught in a situation where their penalty interest was four to $5 million more than it should have been. So they're still out that money. And in fact, they have brought a class action lawsuit against both Madison County and the tax buyers who participated in that, and that's still in process. Mm -hmm. Now, so what did I do when I ran? I promised to clean it up. And one of the, one of the things that I say as kind of my life mottos is you can't beat something with nothing. So if you're gonna point out a problem, you really should bring a solution forward. And the solution was, if, any, if your audience has ever seen The Wizard of Oz, and, uh, and Dorothy at the very end of the movie, uh, she had a problem. She missed home. She wanted to go back to Kansas. And she was there after the Wicked Witch of the West was dead and, and, uh, and Toto was there and, and her whole crew and she wanted to go back to Kansas and, and she didn't know how. And the, as you remember, the beautiful queen, uh, witch of the North arrived and said, well, Dorothy, you've had the answer all along. It's with, you've had these slippers, all you have to do is close your eyes, click your slippers together and, and say, I wanna go home. Well, the solution to the whole tax sale scandal in Madison County was right in Edwardsville with a company by the name of the Joe Myers Company. And unfortunately, Joe Myers passed away about two years ago. But they developed a system of an automated system using computer laptops and everything to automate this process, to take any possible conflict of interest out of the process. And when I first learned about that solution in 2006, I recommended that as a solution. About 15 counties across the state were using that. Today, between 65 and 70 counties, Illinois has 102 counties, are using that solution. And what that does is it saves money, not for uh, most people who pay their taxes on time, but for the people who cannot pay their taxes on time for one reason or another, whose taxes are sold. That, because it's a very uh, competitive, it enforces a very competitive, clean auction, it reduces the cost. And so I'm very proud of that. All of my tax sales uh, that I've had have been uh, an average penalty interest rate under 4%, where uh, under Fred Bathon, they were averaging 18%. So that's, again, I, I estimate that the taxpayers in Madison County, again, the folks who were late, are still out four to five million dollars. Let me ask one question about that topic specifically. Since you say that um, the person who was running the auction was actually convicted of criminal behavior, why is the onus on Madison County uh, in, in other words, the, uh, the class action you said was filed against the tax buyers and Madison County, because even though the guy was acting outside of his office if it was criminal. Because all the elected officials in Madison County knew exactly what was going on. And in fact, the county clerk, uh, the law states that the county clerk or the county clerk's deputy must watch every second of that tax sale and record the results. So it was done under the, under the sunshine, under the bright blue sky, and it was, I complained about it. Two tax buyers complained about it, wrote letters to mm -hmm. the uh, state's attorney's office, and nothing was done. And where does this uh, uh, lawsuit stand now, do you know? 
I'm not really sure, but it continues. It's it's in it's in process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you've explained that very well. Thank you. Um, so another thing would be taxes. So again, pointing out some of the bad ethics of the county treasurer's office that was going on. Uh, also. Uh, taxes and what I've done in my office, I wanted to be a good example. And so my budget coming in was about a million dollars uh, uh, per year, and I've reduced that to seven hundred thousand, saving three hundred thousand a year. That adds up. Is this like for hiring staff, paying? That's them? for the cost of the office. Yeah, the cost of the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. Now, so that's that's the treasurer's office budget is about a million dollars a year, which I've reduced to about seven hundred thousand. Again, less than where it was in nineteen ninety six. But the whole county has a budget of in the neighborhood of uh, forty eight million dollars and mm -hmm. levies taxes in the neighborhood of thirty three to thirty four million dollars. That's a lot of money. So here's another interesting thing that, that goes on and has gone on in the county over the past three to four years, which I consider unethical. I'm a CPA. I'm a certified public accountant. I understand budgets. And what the county has been doing over the past uh, years is they've been they've had a padded budget. What does that mean? That means that they've had an unrealistically large budget on which they base their taxing. Okay, but every year they spend about three to four million dollars less than this inflated budget, and uh, I don't think that's appropriate. And what they do, they have extra money at the end of the year, and they just then put that into a rainy day fund. And the county has uh, already a lot of reserves. When I became county treasurer. The, the county investment portfolio was, I'm going to throw a lot of numbers at you, the county investment portfolio was $108 million, 108. Today it's roughly $40 million more. And why is that? And it's my idea that, and I just think it's common sense, that if the county doesn't need the money, that the money's better off in the people's pockets than in a, in a, in a just never-ending reserve. It's always but from a government bureaucrat, from a bureaucrat standpoint, it's always better to have more money. More money is, well, for any person, more money is always better. But when you're a private citizen or have a, let's say you have a heating and uh, air conditioning and HVAC company, more business, more money is always better. Everyone agrees with that. But when it's the, the, the taxpayer's business, there's a limit. You shouldn't tax more than what you need. Okay. So this brings us to the next point, which was uh, the, um, the initiative petition that you have spearheaded in order to lower a portion of the tax. Why don't you explain to people that the bill that they received with your name on it is really not all going to the county? That's right. That's a very good point. Um, I would say about 60%, more than 60% of the money, when you pay your property taxes, by the way, you can look at the bill and it'll tell you where the money's going. Mm -hmm. But a little bit more than 60% is probably going to the public schools. So for every $1,000 that they're paying, $600 is going yes, to schools. Yes, a little bit more than and 600 400 is going to other places, not, That's right. not just the county. So if I look at my tax bill, I'll see that there's money going to the uh, uh, public schools, there's money going to the community college, there's money going to, going to the library, to the township, to the city, and then the county. The county is about 9% of the tax bill on average across the county. 9%. Mm -hmm. so, that's right. And you talked about this referendum that we have on the ballot, on the November ballot. And let me explain kind of the genesis of that. Yes. About a year ago, uh, during the budgeting process, I said, you know, we really need to stop this whole idea of, of taxing more, about 10% more than what we need. And that was your point about the fact that you're now carrying more cash that's right. than you were when you first became the treasurer. That's right. And uh, so the, uh, the county and, and you know what we do have here in, in Madison County is we have a, a Democrat machine county. And then we have about four of those in Illinois. We've got one in Cook County. We've got one in Rock Island County. We've got one in Madison County and one in St. Clair County. And so they didn't agree. So they, they, they had this idea that they wanted to keep taxing about 10% more than what they needed. And so that's, they went ahead, they reduced it because of the political pressure that I brought to bear. They reduced it by, uh, they reduced their levy by about 2.3% 2 uh, 2 or something like that. But that was just a political ploy when really every year, year after year, we've been overtaxing by about 10%, mm -hmm. which is about three to $4 million. Okay. So, because they wouldn't agree, I said, well, maybe we should put a referendum on the ballot. 
And so we did that. We began uh, a binding referendum, by the way, which is very difficult. Now, the laws in the state of Illinois don't make it easy to reduce taxes. Okay, the laws tend to be biased towards increasing taxes and, in fact, levying taxes sometimes without the voter's knowledge. And that's just government. Every, everything tends to be biased a little bit towards more taxes. So we needed to get a referendum uh, submitted, uh, a petition, a petition with more than 8,000 signatures submitted six months before the election. Now, it's not that the county clerk needs that time to put it on the ballot. It's to make it difficult to reduce taxes, pure and simple. So we did that. We submitted 10,000 signatures. Uh, the Democrat Party uh, uh, strenuously objected to that, and we had two months in court to defend our signatures. Uh, I personally believe we had 8,700 perfectly good signatures, but the, the panel uh, suggested, uh, the panel determined we had 8,300 more good, good signatures, which is enough to put it on the ballot. How many so did you need? We needed about 8,000. Oh, so you were three, about 300 over. But we, you, know, you know that there are going to be mistakes when, when you send out. We had 127 people collecting signatures, mm -hmm. and you know there's going to be errors. And so mm -hmm. our goal was to get at least 20% more well, than what we needed. you get that all the time. I mean, a wife signs for her husband as well. That's right. You know. Now, I've done this a lot. Uh, we had another victory, by the way, in terms of my, my whole emphasis over the entire time that I've been county treasurer have been focused on two things. Uh, number one, taxes, and number two, ethics. And they're related because when you have bad ethics in the tax sales, when, you have, when they're rigged, it costs people money. What it, they're rigged for a reason. They're rigged to take four to five million dollars of cash out of people's pockets. And by the way, the people who are, cannot afford it, who have bills, who are in, the, in, the, in, the, in a bad position to complain about it in any case. So in another situation, when I first became treasurer back when I was sworn in on December 1st of 2010, lo and behold, here comes um, the county chairman and the regional superintendent of schools, and they want a new 1% sales tax, which, don't fall off your seat, this would have increased sales taxes in Madison County by $20 million a year. And I worked. What was this 1%? This was a 1% sales tax. What was it meant for? It was for public school facilities. Okay. And it would have generated an additional tax of $20 million. Mm -hmm. Would have been at 1% not on food, not on pharmaceuticals, not on cars, and not on farm equipment, but on everything. You go into Walmart except for the food, it would have been an additional 1% on everything. And that would have generated an additional $20 million. I worked very hard against that. And we organized a campaign. The pro-tax people uh, invested 65 to, in, uh, contributed 65 to 70 thousand dollars to promote that tax and the people who contributed the most money were the investment bankers why would the investment bankers invest that kind of money and uh, why do they want that tax because they were going to leverage that new 20 million dollars a year to uh, issue bonds which could have been 300 million dollars think of that that would have been new debt on the backs of the madison county taxpayers mm -hmm. and what do investment bankers make on that, they'll make uh, 4%, 5%. And so that'll, that's $12 million for them. That's a lot of money. And so I think people need to recognize that when, when uh, government is uh, borrowing money, it's, uh, there are people that are promoting that. And when bonds are issued, people are making money. And the typical situation, too, is uh, when I make investments in my office, and that's a whole other thing, I get three bids. When, I'm, when I have a million dollars to buy a million dollar bond, that's, that's the, my treasurer's function. When I'm investing Madison County's money, I get three bids. But typically when school districts or when the county is issuing bonds, they don't get bids. And so something for people to keep in mind, and you can see that I've been a, in business my entire life. I'm a certified public accountant and I'm very skeptical about government's intentions in terms of when people say, oh, we're just to the bone, we just need to increase taxes. Well, businesses don't have that option. If you go to a, a business, a restaurant, uh, they don't have, they just can't mandate more revenue. They just can't, and that's what taxes are. Taxes are imposed. It's not a contribution. Mm -hmm. So let's see, we've got about uh, nine, eight minutes somewhere in there left. And so I would like you, 
having said all the things you've said, to now talk about why you've decided that you want to be the county board chairman in Madison County. Describe what it is that the chairman does and what you think that means to you. Well, what the, the, the county chairman can, has a lot more influence than a county treasurer. A county treasurer, I can reduce my budget from a million dollars a year down to 700000 and save 300000 a year. I've also invested the money in a, in a responsible and a legal way. There are a lot of issues that were going on in the treasurer's office before that for nine years they were purchasing, oh, they purchased over a half billion dollars from one Little Rock, Arkansas bond salesman and uh, paid way, way more in commissions than they needed to. And I just do it the way companies do, the way any bank in the Metro East would. Uh, any employee of a bank that's investing bank money, you get three bids. So here we see on the county level, we see overtaxing to the tune of three to four million dollars a year. That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so again, um, you, when people look at their property tax bill, and I think we all agree, uh, studies have shown that Illinois has either the, the, the highest or the second highest of the 50 states property taxes. And I have a lot of opportunity when people complain about their taxes, they don't call Lee Presser, they call me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I get a good sense of what people are saying and people, uh, we've had our population in Madison County decline um, from about 269,500 to about, so it's, it's declined about 3,000 from 2010 to about 2015. But people, some Illinoisans, and I think we read this in the press, are leaving the state because of high property taxes. And I think that every public official has an obligation to try to uh, provide the services and do their job with less money. And I think it's possible. Uh, you know, I think, if, but again, if you've worked for the government all your life, you just say, no, it's not possible. Well, in business, you don't have the option of saying it's not possible, you have to find a way. And so that's one of the reasons. Another reason is ethics too. Um, we don't have an ethics advisor in the county. We should, but we don't. Why don't we? We've had two resign because I've asked the question, and this is the question that I posed to an ethics advisor in the county earlier this year. The purchasing director for the county is also the county chairman's campaign account treasurer. So the same person who is making decisions on what vendors to use and how to spend the county's money, he's also collecting political donations from campaign contr uh, contributors or vendors. And the campaign, the county chairman has collected over $100,000 of do dollars from large vendors of the county. And again, when I talk to people, Lee, in other counties in Illinois, and I'm not, I'm not negative on the state of Illinois. The state of Illinois, if you go back 20 years, was the fourth highest per capita income in the country. The state of Illinois was commercially very, very health healthy when many people watching the show were younger. The, it was a commercial juggernaut from top to bottom. Why has Illinois slipped? I think because in Springfield and at a state level, we've had bad ethics, okay? And we've had higher taxes. But when you have bad ethics, that means you're not bidding as carefully. And that's what we see here. And so when I tell other county treasurers about how the bidding process goes in, in, uh, in Madison County, they just laugh. They laugh. And when I ran in 2006 and began gathering information, they laughed at me then, uh, people from other counties. And they said, do you realize where you are? That's a pay to play county. And I think that's what we have to change. Uh, and I think through leadership at the, at the county level, uh, that would help a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So that's why, that's why you're running. That's right. And specifically here in the last five minutes, what is it that you would actually do as the chairman that's not being done right now? Well, number one, uh, my campaign treasurer would not be the purchasing director. We would have a purchasing director who's an honest to goodness purchasing director, okay? And who would get bids. And we would also then, uh, there, and I would follow the example of DuPage County and Will County, and they hire a third party company. Again, remember that I hired a third party company, the Joe Meyer Company of Edwardsville, to manage the tax sale process and automate it. Will County and DuPage County both do something similar where they use a third party company to, if you're sitting at home, let's say you're an HVAC contractor and you're sitting at home on a Saturday night at nine o'clock and you say, you know what, I'd like to, I'd like to be, get the bids. I'd like to be able to bid on the county business. 
if you're living in Will County or DuPage County, you just go to your computer and you can put in your name and from that point on you'll get an email. It'll be very transparent when there are bids and you'll oh. be able to bid on that process. So you'll know when the county is asking for bids. That's right. Bids. And hopefully, and also I've never taken any donations from tax buyers. Uh, the, the, the tax buyers were the ones. In, how can you manage an auction when you're taking political contributions from the participants in the auction? And that's what the problem was in Madison County. Fred Bathon took more than $150,000 of donations. Frank Miles took uh, a little, about $20,000 of donations. And from the guys who for, eventually won the various The guys bids who were participating saying, in the and sale. And that you said were, were charging, were actually bidding at the highest That's level right. of 18% instead of closer to 4%. Let's say you're a farmer and you're retiring and you're selling your equipment and you invite an auctioneer to do the auction the auctioneer, and now you find out he's taking contributions from the people out in the crowd, and he's the one that's... So it just doesn't happen. It's just everybody recognizes it's just common sense that it doesn't work, mm -hmm. but these are the things that can go on in government because you just don't have, you just don't have the same kind of care. You don't have one owner who's saying, you know what, Lee, if, if you're gonna work for me, I want you to get three bids, even if it's for getting a lawn mowing company to mow the grass around the warehouse, Lee, I want you to get three bids. That's the way business works. Now, if you're the owner of the company and if you want to give it to your friend, Hobie, you can say, you know, that's your decision because you can spend more money because it's your money. But as a public official, we need to have transparent processes. We need to do things and have bidding and, and that'll drive down the cost of government and that'll benefit the taxpayer. So people are sitting at home, why do we have high property taxes? One reason is because we have a Democrat machine type of system working, and I'm convinced that we can do things cheaper and better if we have more transparency and better bidding. Well, I, have, I, mean, I agree that uh, transparency is good. I like the sound of the bidding process that you uh, transformed the tax buying system into um, having uh, having people be able to from their businesses be able to enter information into the computer and be able to know when the bids are out there these are all these are all excellent things so I I like the sound of that one thing that people who are in this audience uh, should know is that um, um, I was going to say something but we actually are down to our last few seconds, so I'm going to give you the last 30 seconds just to say something to the audience that you haven't said yet. Well, I think that uh, we have an opportunity in Madison County to make a change, and I think that um, I think that when you when you have uh, one group that's in power for a long time and controls all the levers of power, I think it's human nature that things can be overlooked and bad things can happen, and we've seen that in Madison County, and so. Uh, that's my focus is I think we all recognize we need lower taxes and we need better ethics and that's what I'm running on. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. And to my audience, I've been speaking with uh, Kurt Prenzler. He's a CPA, <coughs> excuse me, and he's also the tra treasurer of Madison County, Illinois. He's been in office since uh, 2010, actually December? Yes. Yeah, yeah just right there at the end of, the, of 2010 and he's still the treasurer of Madison County. We're gonna upload this to YouTube, show it to your friends. Thanks, bye.